All right, Troy Hayden here, joined by Marky Ramone. Hello there. How about this? Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Member of the Ramones, the band that invented punk rock. Yes. Member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, very grateful for that. Does that ever get old, hearing that, that you're a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Uh, no, no, I love hearing it because we never thought in a million years we would be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame representing our genre of music. We're amongst our peers. So every time I hear that, I go, great. I, I was so <laughs> amazed and, uh, you know, uh, it's a learning institution about how rock evolved over the years, you know, so it's a good place to visit. And you're still playing, you're still creating, oh, yeah. you've got a brand new book out, which we'll talk a lot more yes. about here as, yeah. we, as we go through this. Um, can we start when you were young? Yeah, so sure. here you are, you're, what, 10, 11, 12 years old, you're at home, and I've, you hear this anecdote from so many people of a, of a certain age, and that is, you're watching Ed Sullivan yes. and the Beatles come on. Yes. And what, what hit you when the Beatles came on? Well, uh, their image, uh, I put away my toy soldiers, my army jeeps I made, and uh, my troop carriers, my tank, patent tanks, and they just blew me away as an impressionable young kid, little boy. And then I started banging on things which drove my parents crazy. And uh, then I put together a drum set, and it, and it was actually Ringo's fault <laughs> that I became uh, who I became. A musician. Because you watched it and you said, oh, I don't want to be uh, John, I don't want to be Paul, I want to be Ringo. Yeah, yeah, he, he was very animated. He was, he was the most animated out of them all and, you know, coming off of the great cartoons from Hanna-Barbera and Warner Brothers, uh, they were very cartoon-like. So uh, there I went, there I was. And you made it happen. And you got a drum kit and you worked at it and you worked at it. And you formed a band while you were still in high school that had some success. Yes. Dust, yes. correct? Yeah, we were one of the first heavy metal bands in America. And uh, Explain that to me. How were you one of the first heavy metal bands? What well, there was nothing happening in America at the time that was that, that kind of mu music. There were a few bands. I could count them on my fingers. But in England, it started first. But the first album that we did was already written. And we liked those bands, but our material was already done. We just had to go into a studio and record them. So uh, we, I was still in high school. So my father and mother wanted that diploma on the wall. And I, Good for them. I, I didn't blame them, you know. So I had to go to night school and summer school to make up uh, all of the, the uh, classes that I didn't do too well in. And there was my diploma. And then the group had to fizzle out because that was the most important thing. And then. Um, uh, the guitar player produced the first two Kiss albums. Oh, wow. And uh, I started uh, working with other people. And I did five albums uh, before I even joined the Ramones. So I had all this experience at a very young age. Right. In and they teens. knew about you, and that's why they recruited you to get yes. in there. We'll get to that in just a second. But you, in this stage of your life, you also ran into some uh, future legends like Jimi yes. Hendrix, correct? Yeah, yeah. How did you run into Jimi Hendrix? Well, uh, the Making of Electric Ladyland, uh, the album, a uh, friend of mine um, is in it, named uh, Velvet Turner, who was a good friend of Jimi Hendrix's. So uh, he said, Mark, do you want to come down and meet Hendrix? I said, well, what do you, what do you think? You know, because he was <laughs> sure. one of a kind, great guitar player. So uh, there I went with him, and besides Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison was there. And really? Buddy Miles, yeah. And you're just all hanging out in what, in well, a bar, or what was it? Hanging out at a round table. I, I couldn't drink, I was too young. So here we are, but Velva was my authority figure so I can get in. He was responsible for me that night. So uh, I, I couldn't say anything. I was like just in awe. You know, Buddy Miles took me into the bathroom and he offered me something, I declined. Uh, I didn't, I didn't want to do a deal on that. You How know. old were you then? 16. Oh yeah, so you're still a kid. Yeah, I didn't want to deal with that stuff. And uh, I went back to the table. Uh, they were drinking. I, I wasn't into drinking yet. And that was enough for me. I left, went back uh, to Erasmus Hall High School in Brooklyn, New York. I told everybody and they didn't believe it. I bet, huh? Luckily, and that's before you could take selfies. Cell phones, there you go. I would have definitely <laughs> had a hundred of them. You know, so that, that, was, that was a joy to be a young, impressionable kid at that time, meeting these guys, you know. So, but you had created a rep for yourself, and uh, when the Ramones' original drummer decided he didn't want to be the drummer anymore, yeah. you step in. He was in a band three and a half years. I, I didn't want the original uh, members to break up because I liked them, but he just wanted to produce. 
Uh, he wasn't roadworthy. So, um, this was Tommy Ramon. Yes, yeah, this is Tommy. So he told the other three, if you see me at CBGB's, which was our haunt, sure. uh, asked Mark if he wanted to, wants to join the band, because he recommended me because he liked my, my playing. And uh, one thing led to another. Didi Ramon asked me our bass player, and then we had a small rehearsal, and that was it. And you're in. The first song I recorded with them was I Want to Be Sedated. Which, and I have to ask, because, you know, I'm in news, and our, the things we do now, except for stuff like this, this will live on, but they tend to go right away. I mean, I Want to Be Sedated will be played long after you leave this earth, correct? <laughs> Is that weird to yes. think that? Yes. Uh, but they didn't play it when it immediately came out. Uh, maybe, maybe because, you know, I want to be sedated, you know, uh, refer to maybe drugs or something. It really didn't. It was just, you know, before you go on a plane, you're a little, you know what I mean? Sure. You'll have a few uh, martini or something. But um, now it's all everywhere, I mean, all over the world. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that the other guys were still alive to see that. Right. So. And Hey Ho, Let's Go and Rock and Roll High School. I mean, these are anthems that you hear in stadiums when yeah. you, NFL games are going on. Yeah. Is that weird for you to hear those? A lot of the uh, play, uh, sports figures are Ramon's fans, and they liked that chant, hey, ho, let's go, because it gets, gets them revved up. So we, uh, that, that's one song. Rock and Roll High School, obviously, is from the movie itself, the, the uh, soundtrack, too. So uh, that was a very important time for us to get to that next level. You, you know. mentioned uh, CBGB, if I can go back and, and talk about that a little bit. Now, I've been a West Coast guy my whole life, so when I hear CBGBs, I just think, oh, this, this you know, uh, magic place where all these things happen. Yeah, and you look yeah, at yeah, pictures yeah. of it, yeah. and it really looks like a dump in, inside. Dump. So tell me about CBGB and that whole scene. Well, it was a dump, but it was our dump. <laughs> we were able to hone our skills there. And uh, the owner of CBGB's let us play the Hilly Crystal. And uh, at the time, uh, Disco and stadium rock was very big. And a lot of places didn't want to gamble on a new genre of music called punk rock. So we were, we were lucky to have uh, CBGBs along with Blondie, Talking Heads, Television, Patti Smith, you have the Ramones. And, and eventually it got too small for us to play. It was too small for us to play. We got How many bigger. people can be in there? Because it does look really small. Yeah. I would say about 275. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. It was elongated, you know, it was a rectangle. Right. So, uh, but unfortunately, he didn't have uh, doors on the bathrooms. Uh, yeah, they they had a dog in there that Hilly didn't walk, so you can imagine oh, what happened. Oh, jeez. Uh, but um, every, everybody was there, photographers, producers, managers. Um, it's like a scene was created yeah, there yeah, was, in a way, yeah. right? Or at least but, fostered. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't know what, we didn't plan that. It just happened that way. You know, there was this new form of music being uh, created, and then uh, created interest in, in other uh, people who were involved with the music business on different levels, you know? It seemed like, at least from in the book, and the book is called uh, Punk Rock Blitzkrieg, My Life as a Ramon by Marky Ramon. Yes. It was a great read, by the way. I read Thank it over you the weekend and really enjoyed Thanks. it. It seemed like you were always kind of struggling, and especially with John, who seemed to be kind of Johnny, seemed to be the most commercially minded, trying to get that commercial success in your in your heyday but you never really attained it that much did you no we uh we just believed in what we were doing i mean it would have been nice if we had a hit at that moment but then when i look back i go well i appreciate the longevity instead of being a one-hit wonder because now the songs are hits right you know better late than never uh but um at that moment in time it would have been nice uh we didn't change our style which a lot of groups do do to get that hit, we maintained in what we believed in, right. you know. And there were some real challenges. When you think about working with somebody, and you were on and off for tw over 20 years, is that right? It was 15 Man, 15, total, right? yes, 1,700 shows. Okay, so, you know, yeah. for somebody to work with somebody else, like maybe myself here, you know, you all work together, then you all go home and you have your own separate lives. But in a rock band, it's not like that as much, especially when you're on the road. I yeah, mean, yeah, you're yeah. working and then you're living and then you're smelling each other's body odors and <laughs> you're in that van, that yeah. famous van that everybody's always yep. talking about. Our trusty 15-passenger Ford Econoline van. <laughs> we had our assigned seats. We didn't want to tour on a tour bus and hire a driver. We would have rather have kept that money in our pockets. Sure, that's expensive, those kinds of things. Yeah, and... Uh, 
Well, yeah, like you just said, we got to know each other very well on so many levels. Uh, so is it almost like dog years being in a band, working with somebody? I mean, like one year of working with somebody in a band is like five years of a normal person. I, I would with say that workers. quality time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quality time. That's what it was. All right. So, um, and you know, it's got to be it's the, the end of your book is the passing of, of the other original members of the band. Yeah. And I know um, I, I've heard you say that that's, that was hard for you to write. So um, can you talk about that a little bit about how, you know, well, they succumbed to cancer. Unfortunately, it, it, it uh, definitely it, it dis doesn't discriminate towards anybody's bodies. Uh, you could be the healthiest person in the world. And um, they were too young, really, to enjoy the fruits of their labor when they passed away, you know? Right. So that's why I continue to tour the world, because there's a whole new generation when Joey and Dee Dee and uh, Johnny and myself decided to retire. In 96, we discussed this in 94, to do our last shows around the world. But uh, that's what I do now, because I feel the songs are too good not to be played. And there's a whole new generation uh, who, are, who are able to go out now, because they're old enough, right. you know? Is that what drives you? I mean, what I always ask people who've had a lot of success in their life, and, I, and they're still working and still pushing hard, because this can't be super easy, what you're doing now. I, what I, drives you? As long as it's enjoyable. You know, I enjoy playing this kind of music. I'm not here to compete with the Ramones. I would never call my band the Ramones. We were definitely a bunch of four different, different unique individuals. You'll never find a bunch of guys like us together again, you know? But uh, as I travel the world, I see the, uh, the, the young adults really liking this music, whether it's the lyrical content or the energy of the band. So uh, it keeps me going. Sure. Wanting to continue to do this. And in a day and age where you get so much auto tune and effects and whatever, the Ramones are just kind of raw. Real and bare. deal. No tapes. We never re we don't rely on any samples. We never had to, and I think that's what a lot of youth today want to see. I think they uh, already seen the samples and the tapes go off while the singer was singing, and he's just you can't hear right. the guy because the tape stopped. And right. you know, I think a lot of of the youth. Uh, know that and they can see that in a performance in someone when somebody's just singing along to a tape or playing to a tape but with the Ramones it was the real deal it was uh, bare bones and you know it's the way it was what about rock music today I mean we, we had a great long time rock music station here in town that just went off the air yeah um, and it seems like they're disappearing and so what are your thoughts on that well, there's a, there's a lot of rock uh, I, I have a show on Sirius XM my own radio show and um, there's a lot of bands that are new and they're, they're up and coming. Uh, the, the old staple is still there, you know, the Stones, U2, Pearl Jam, uh, et cetera. But uh, there's so many genres now that everyone has such a choice to choose from, you right. know, of, of what, what they want to listen to. Uh, and ways to get it. Yeah, definitely. Times change. Uh, rock isn't new anymore. You know, there's a whole new generation that likes other things. But in the end, it's only rock and roll. Right. It's really what it is, you know. And boy, you guys played it with the best of them, and you continue to play. Always, uh, as long as it's fun, and uh, eventually your body will tell you when to stop. <laughs> and it hasn't told you that yet, Not has yet. it? No, I, uh, I play drums all my life. I, I constantly work out, and I never smoked cigarettes. I, I did have a, a drinking problem as a young man, right. but I stopped that. I, I realized that Back in the 80s. Uh, yeah, right? following your dreams is a lot more important than waking up with a headache from beer. So uh, that, that's very important, and education is very important today. Uh, when, in, in, when I was going to high school, uh, you could have, have had a high school education and get a, a very good job. Now you have to go to college, and I right. suggest, you know, to all the youth out there, if you're in music, try to have something else to lean on like a college education or, you know, whatever, so you can fall back on it if you don't succeed in music. And that's coming from a punk rocker. Yeah. Who knows the stuff. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's an important thing, especially, especially with the technology today. Right. High school's not going to do it. Nope. You could bring the cell phones to high school, but what's that going <laughs> you know, to do, you know what I mean? Right. So. 
Marky Ramon, the book is Punk Rock Blitzkrieg, My Life as a Ramon. Uh, I'd like to recommend it. Good reading. You're Thank playing you. tonight, correct? Gonna, I'm oh, not you're playing. Tonight. I'm, I think it's a Q&A. I'll be signing books uh, uh, there. And uh, bring the book, you know. He's signing. Great. Great meeting you, Marky Ramon. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Okay, you too. Okay.